This one is the Milani Dangerous Links. At first, Audra and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new I'm not sure how you got here but certainly I'm glad you came and if you are new well you're in for a treat all right guys so I'm kind of sitting awkwardly because <laughs> I'm trying some new setups because I want to be able to use the light that I have because I haven't had natural light in my old place I had almost no good natural light and now that I have some I'm trying to figure out how to best use it so bear with me as i move around i'm hoping that the sound is okay for you so what we're here with today is my bots and flops or really favorites and fails as everyone calls it and i just kind of wanted to share this with you the items that i loved for february it's going to be kind of february and january that way i've encompassed everything so it's going to be a little long if this is something you enjoy please feel free hang out let's talk all right all right, so the first thing I want to go ahead and get started with are these Luxie sponges that I got in a boxy charm. These things are hard as rock. Like this one's all right. This one's actually good for powder. It's soft, but the one that's supposed to be for your face is so hard. I have all this foundation on. I tried to use it. It was like beating my face into submission. It was horrible horrible every time I tried to use I was like ding, ding. I was like sorry face Ugh, I'm so sorry it ah, gosh it was like having another one of my ex-boyfriends just show up and like want to hang out and I was uninterested but they kept texting that's what this feels like it's just horrible it I will I don't know and I think the price tag on these was like $44 or something for the set and I was just like no way no fucking way because my uh, real technique sponges are soft they're glorious no I'm no mm -mm. That, that was just an absolute no thank you from me so those are definitely fails for me or flops. I hate them. Let me know which one you like. Bops and flops or favorites and fails. Uh, we'll just interchange them throughout this video. Keeping with tools. Okay, all of these brushes are absolute bops for me. Absolute bops. I got, I think all of these I got in a beauty box of some form or another. This one's a Farrah brush. I used this one for my bronzer. This one is from Complex Culture. I use this one for my bronzer as well. I do kind of like a two-pronged bronzer approach. Uh, like I kind of settled a line and I use this to blend it. I don't know if this is supposed to be for foundation, but it's from Crown and I use it for foundation. And I love this brush. It's just, it's so soft when it applies the foundation to my face. And I don't end up with like hairs, none of the, hair, none of the bristles come out. So like the bristles don't come out. It doesn't leave streaks even application i'm down for it and then i use this for my highlighter because i like how like fluffy it is it's just a fluffy brush and it has such a light touch and you can either go in hard or you can go in soft so i like this because this is the first brush i've had in a really long time to apply a uh, highlighter that doesn't just like deposit a big clump in one spot and i can't move it hey bo and I can't move it. So this is the first one that I've had where I can actually really move the, the highlighter around. I find that I've had a lot of, this is a Moda brush from like Royal and Langonickel. I think that's how you say it. But this one I just liked for that. I just, it, I really like it. I use it all the time. So these four brushes from various beauty boxes, it's either BoxyCharm or uh, Ipsy Glam Bag. They're just, I love all of them. So I'm very happy that I got all of these in, in beauty boxes. I mean, now I'm gonna try to start buying my own brushes because I'm taking a beauty box hiatus after I get this next boxy charm. I'm gonna put up a poll here and you guys let me know if you want to see my last boxy Lux or whatever I'm getting. I think I'm getting like all the boxes to be honest because I didn't make any changes like I should have. So let's just move on from that. But let me know in the poll. Let me know. Also, I would like to forgive all the sniffles that I have. I don't, the weather keeps changing here in Texas. So it's right now it's like 80 degrees and Tuesday it's supposed to be like 50 degrees, but because it kind of drops at night, like I've been getting the sniffles moving on. <laughs> so next up, these are both favorites. I actually really like both of these mascaras. 
This one is the Milani Dangerous Links. At first, I wasn't sure that I liked this and I have the same feeling about this Tarte Amazonian Clay Smart Mascara. I just really wasn't sure because it seemed like the initial application was kind of like, meh, but then, but then, right now I have on this one, but then it just, I don't know, it, it grew on me and it makes my lashes look really full from the side, especially in pictures when I just kind of turn and I'm taking a, hi, taking a photo. It's so full and they're so long and they're buildable. And I'm a big buildable mascara person. Hi, Bo Beer. Because for me, I love mascara. If you've watched some of my videos, you know lashes are not my thing. I'm not good at lashes. They weigh my eyes down. It feels so heavy and I'm just blinking at everybody and they're concerned about my health. So I like a good buildable mascara and I like it to not have so much shit. Like the wands are good that they don't pick up a ton of the product. They don't get a lot of the goo. And so since they don't get a lot of the goo, you can kind of move it around. Both of these, I've been applying mascara before and then sneezed while doing so. And it didn't really deposit a lot onto the rest of my face. So I was surprised by that as well. The wand is built really well. I'll try to see if I can show these to you with this guy trying to gather all the attention. But this is the wand. It really separates the lashes. I like that. And again, I don't have a ton of product all over. And this is just kind of like a standard wand. I don't know what it is, but I think it's because they're short instead of long. So I, these are both favorites for me. I'm going to keep them in my mascara rotation and be using them all the time. And if I could get up close, I would, but I can't because 70 pounds is trying to like be in my lap right now. This is one of the reasons why I chose the upper spot to film, but I don't like the sound there as much and I don't like the light. So anyways. All right, so you might hear Bo in the background or you can see him. He is eating his squeezy cheese, so we'll see how long that lasts. So next up, we're gonna talk about the foundations I've tried January and February and how I felt about them. First up, we're gonna have the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing Makeup Broad Spectrum SPF 40 motherfucking five. These names need to slow down. I'm just saying, they need to slow down on these names. But I loved this foundation. I was really surprised by how much I like it. And in fact, it got me into liking a little bit of, um, what is that stuff called? Is it like primer, that's its name. It got me into liking primer a little bit and I was shocked, I tell you, shocked and surprised. Because I'm that bitch who's always like, primer doesn't do anything but it kind of does sometimes, not all the time. Anyways, I like this a lot, very nice finish. It's buildable if you want it thicker, or like not thicker, but if you want like a full coverage one day you can, if you want a little bit of lighter coverage another day you can. And I love that it's in this tube, but it has a pump. You guys, you can see it's like well fucking loved. I also dropped it, so we're not gonna talk about how dirty it is around the top, but it has the pump. And I just am so glad somebody finally did that because these tubes are fantastic up until you start getting towards the end of the foundation or the product. And then you're just like squeezing for your life to get it out. The pump really helps you and you just set it in the, you just gotta make sure when you shake it, you can shake it. You can still shake it. I don't know why I'm always shaking things in videos. Somebody come for me. All right. Next up is the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid. This is a hardcore fail flop for me. It is disgusting. I hate this with like every ounce of strength in my tiny body. And the reason I hate it so much is because it just sits on the outside, it just sits on your skin. Like right now I'm wearing a foundation and it's not sitting on my skin, it's a part of my skin. We became one. This doesn't wanna become one with anything. And in fact, if you try to put a concealer on, bleh, it makes all the concealers look terrible because it, this doesn't want to move. It's like a gelatinous blob on your face and it feels disgusting. I made mention of how disgusting it feels in a recent live stream. I don't really want to talk about it, but it's gross. It's a very waxy, gross finish and I am not about this. So this I'm probably going to declutter in my declutter, which is coming up soon. So yeah. Let's just say bye to this hoe because next up we have the foundation I am wearing right now, which is the UMA 
Say Wet Wigless Soft Matte, Soft Matte Foundation. And these names, can we just call it foundation? Can we just say like Uma and then like this one's Soft Matte? And anyways, I'm going to give it a pass because I love this foundation. It is absolutely glorious. I This is the foundation that actually got me into loving a dewy finish. I used to be all about having like a full-on matte because I have combination skin, which currently is trending towards more of an oily situation because of the weather fluctuations. But this really made me like it and made me experiment more with my base and how to make it look still dewy without being oily. I just love this. And it's, it comes off so easily. When you're washing your face, it doesn't feel gross. And all throughout the day, it doesn't feel like I have makeup on. It just feels like, oh, that's my skin. And it really is weightless. When it says weightless, it, they mean weightless. So yeah, I like this foundation a lot. If you have not picked it up, I highly recommend you do. This one's about $39, I believe. And that does not make me mad. Uh, I, but I'll pay a lot of money for a good foundation. The Essay Lauder is about $44, I think. Hi, baby. All right. And keeping with face products, uh, the MAC Strobe Cream coming through so the max strobe cream is actually one of the products that also got me into enjoying a more luminous look i really like it because it just gives you this very healthy glow and it literally makes you look like you're just happy and this will fix a lot of foundations that are going awry except for that maybelline it won't fix that but it'll fix a lot of foundations that if it's going a little funky this is just like a little trial size i don't know if i can get it to where you can actually See it there we go this is just a little trial size i'm definitely probably more than likely going to get a full size of this because i like this a lot it is fantastic it is smooth it's moisturizing you can swap it out you can use both a moisturizer and this for me if i'm going to use this i just use this but i love it because it's just it's nice it's hydrating and it gives you a little bit of a glow and also if i don't feel like wearing makeup one day but i still want to look luminous the max strobe cream that's my bitch okay Another face product, but it's like makeup, um, I think everything I have is like face products, nothing's a palette. Moving on, is this Becca Champagne, oh wait, I don't know why I said, uh, I know why I said Champagne Pop, because Kara C was talking about it. So anyway, this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed Highlight, and it is in Chocolate Geode. I love this, I'm wearing it now. I just love that it gives me a very subtle glow. I'm a, I'm a subtle bitch. I like to have a subtle glow. And I am really just enjoying the color. I'm trying to see if I can get it to where you guys can sort of see that. I like this color. I'm going to dip my finger in just a little bit here. And just kind of give you, it's like, it's a very bronzy. I think I might have too much lighting to be able to show it to you. But it's kind of a bronzier, like, night gold. Like, I don't know. I love the color because it's more towards my skin. Skin. I feel like there's a lot of ones that are just gold gold and the problem is because I also I have a neutral but, but yellow undertone sometimes the gold gold is just moss for me and it makes me look like a little a little bit like a gold statue which is fine sometimes I enjoy that look but for my everyday highlighter I've been this has been my go-to so this is a fave and I'm very happy that I have this I think I got this in a boxy charm so I love this now, let me just tell you that there are definitely things that I purchased. Like the Uma Foundation, I bought that. The Maybelline Foundation, I bought that. Uh, the This mascara, the Milani Dangerous Lynx, I purchased this. And then this I did get in a box of some form. I don't know what I got it in, though. The Tarte? Anyways, let's go back forward because I rewound. I think that's what we did. And now we're going to get back. Like, we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we are. Okay, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Milani Ludicrous Lip Glosses. Bitch, I'm wearing it now. It's actually on top of a liquid lip. I'm trying to run through them so I can just go back to my glossy bitch life. But this is amazing. It makes me wanna, yeah. So it makes me wanna do that every time I put it on. This is the best lip gloss I've had in so long so long and it's not expensive it's fantastic what i love about these lip glosses is that i'm about to buy a bunch more but i bought this i went on like a little milani haul and i bought this and i absolutely adore 
adore this with everything I have in my body. Look at, you see how it's not sticky? It's not a sticky gloss. You can wear it by itself. It's not like, it, but it gives you maximum shine. You see that? Moving on. I love it. It's shiny. It's glossy. And my most favorite thing is it's not glittery. I'm fucking tired of glittery gloss. Can we let that end? I know it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I hate the glittery gloss. I despise it. I don't want my lips to have glitter pieces in it. And I find that for me, I have sensitive lips and I seem to always feel the glitter and it bothers me. So yeah. I'm definitely, this is a good buy. I'm going to go get some more. There's more one that's more red and then like another, a couple other colors, like a purpley one. I want all of them that are in my color tone, my color scheme. I want them. Love it. Love it. This is a bop. All right, continuing our super fun face products is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Now I know. Like, bitch, where have you been? Away, and I don't fuck with powder. But I started learning how to properly use it if I needed it. And the only place I really use this is in my T-zone. And it's typically when I'm wearing one of my hydrating foundations, one of these two. If I'm wearing one of these, I use a, just a teeny tiny bit. Just a teeny tiny, tiny bit. Just a teeny tiny bit of this. And it's gold. It's absolute gold. I love it. It looks amazing. It doesn't leave a weird cast, which I was surprised by because mine is just, it's not, it's like a, it's kind of, it's not the white. It's more of a beigey color, which I was surprised by. So it's not white. Uh, what color did I get? They give it to me and they, I don't know. It doesn't say, but it's a setting powder and I just like it because I just, I don't know. I'm not normally a powder person, but when I do need it, I have found that this fits the bill. So, oh, I got it in some kind of subscription box. We know. We know. Bitch, when you go buy your own makeup? When I feel like it. All right, so this is definitely a bot for me. All right, so all of these, with the exception of one, I bought with my own damn money. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on these puppies. The Catrice Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. I hate it. There's nothing that you can do to make it look good. It's garbage. I'm sorry. I don't like the way it fits. It is on my skin. It creases pretty bad. And ugh, I just don't. Ee, it's, ee, it may last the 12 hours, but it just looks hideous. It makes it for me, it emphasized my. And I know that this is the wrong color, obviously. I was ordering online and I was inebriated. But. It just, even using it in the spaces that I normally use it in, which is like on my face right here where my pores are to kind of help conceal and bring those down a bit, it just really made that area look bumpy and gross and gave me a lot of extra texture I did not want. So this one's a flop. The LA Pro Girl Pro, like the LA Girl Pro Conceal, I can never figure out what I'm saying there. This is the High Definition Concealer. I don't like it. It feels like water or something. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it does much. I like the little applicator, but there's something where it just seems to not want to stick to the skin. That's it. It doesn't want to stick to your skin, and that's problematic if you're just trying to like use, and you can kind of see it here. Let me see if I can show it to you. So it's a little problematic if you're just trying to use this to just like kind of conceal like your under eye circles and go out like no makeup. I just feel like it just disappears. Like for me, and I know the lights are bright, but for me it just feels like it disappears. It does leave like a small amount of conceal. It conceals a little bit, but it, feel like, it felt like for me I had to keep putting more and more and more on just to get it to the level of coverage that I needed. So this was a flop for me. If you have not seen my NYX Born to Glow uh, review, this is definitely a flop. I hate it. I'm definitely going to be having this in my declutter. It is hot garbage. I am, first of all, I'm not a fan of this little boppy thing. I know that there are people who like it. I do not. I found that it made it more difficult for me to find a spot for it. I feel like whatever they put in this to try to make it glow is what ruined it, if I'm going to be honest. I feel like maybe, and I'm going to try a different concealer from NYX. If you guys have any suggestions or any things you want me to try, let me know below. But yeah, this was just garbage to me. It made me just look like I was sick. I look like a sick, ugly alien all the time, and I hated it. So this is a no. Next up, we have the Pretty Vulgar Concealer. Uh, this one is in Shady Lady. This is their undercover concealer. Okay, so here's the thing. This is a, a meh. This is more of a meh product. Here's why. 
I hate, hate this. I hate the applicator. Because the angle it's at, it makes it difficult to apply everywhere else, but I do love the color. I like the coverage for the most part. However, it does have some difficulty sticking around my mouth. I don't know if it's because of my facial hair, but uh, yeah, that is a problem. But otherwise, I like the coverage that it provides around my facial area and my T-zone where I like to put concealer. It's not a bad deal. Like, I like it, but, you know, it's just kind of meh. This one, though, the J-Cat uh, Stay Assurance Concealer. It's water sealed and zero smudge. This thing is like $6. It's the shit. I love this. I wear it every day. I'm wearing it the fuck out. I love it so much. It is definitely, definitely a bop. I like the applicator. It's big. You do have to dip more than once. I don't care. I actually got a, the perfect color for when I don't want to wear makeup. It's here when I don't want to wear makeup, not the black dot obviously, but when I don't want to wear makeup, and I'm going to see if it'll do that, when I don't feel like wearing makeup, this does a really good job of just making me look naturally attractive instead of like I didn't get any sleep and drank a lot the night before, and maybe I did, maybe I didn't, it's nobody's business, that's why there's concealer. So I like this a lot, and you can see it actually did a fairly good job with the little amount I did to conceal that little black spot there, uh, what was, I, I was trying out an eyeliner and ugh, that went bad. But yeah, that is definitely in a surprise bop for me. I was not expecting to like that concealer as much as I do. And I'm like, bitch, yes, give, give it to me. I want it all my life, all my life. All right. The one I don't have right here, but absolutely love is the Milani concealer. Let me see if I can find that for you right quick. Cause I gathered all my stuff, but when I moved, decided to move locations last minute, I think I may have missed it. So hold on. Yes, I found it. The Milani Conceal and Perfect. This is my bitch. I love her. Great coverage. And this is a little lighter than I normally like, but it's actually found fantastic for me to put underneath my foundation, which is why I was saying fantastic. But that, that's the name of my product. Anyway, <laughs> but I like this a lot because if I'm trying to just, if, especially when I'm wearing a bit of a darker color that I normally like a more chocolatey foundation, but I just need to like give some light underneath my skin, I'll use this one. I really like it and I'll, I don't, I don't like to put my concealer on top so much anymore. I used to, but I feel like we had that whole bright eye situation going on and then I ended up hating it at some point was like, girl, you look ridiculous. You look surprised and also ended up making you look sunken in because of all the light and the darkness. I have hollow skeletal eyes. Moving on, I like this a lot. This was definitely a favorite. I paid for this out of my own pocket. <laughs> Not that I didn't pay out for other stuff, but the other things I just got surprised in my box, boxy charms or ipsies. This I actually went out and purchased. So yes to this. This is definitely a good one. I think it's only like $10, so I really like it. Ooh, and on lip products, I forgot one that I just found, and this is the Lip Love Gloss. It's garbage, it is a flop, I'm sorry. I don't know, it's a vegan lip gloss. Here's the thing, because I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's like you put oil on your lip. Like, let me see if I can show it to you. Also, it has glitter in it, which I also hate, but it just looks like you, like oil. It looks like oil and that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like I just put vegetable oil on my lips and went out and I was like, I'm going to fry in this Texas heat in the summer, so this is definitely a flop. More than likely, I'm going to get rid of that, so there's that. Sticking with our faces, uh, <laughs> we're going to start hitting up the skincare aspect of the whole thing, which is my favorite. We're going to hit Dr. Brandt. Oh my gosh, this 24-7 retinal eye cream with a ruby crystal complex. I don't know what that is. I do like ingredients. I should research this more so that I can talk about it a bit more, but it's a retinol eye cream. Bitch, when I tell you that my under eyes have started looking more fantastic, I don't know what else to tell you. What I mean by this is that when I am, that this is one of the reasons why I have stopped wearing concealer on top and done a little bit underneath and just kind of lightly dusted this area because of this damn cream. Like this, I'm using it every single day and it takes so little. I don't want to know how much the real one costs, but I'm sure somebody down there is going to tell me and I'm going to lose my ever loving mind because I'm going to want to purchase this. I love it. And Emily and Anne, I think we were talking about this at one point in time. This is the one I was talking about for eye creams. It's the Dr. Brandt. Oh, baby Jesus, the lighting. Um, the Dr. Brandt 
what Dr. Brand 24-7 retinol eye cream. Do I need to put all this stuff in the sub? Oh my gosh, is this, if I have to put all this in my description, I'm gonna try. All right, so then the next thing we're staying with Dr. Brandt is the Hydrobiotic Recovery Sleeping Mask. I used to, old me about a year ago, talk some massive shit about sleep masks, and <laughs> I'm so sorry. I apologize. I was wrong, and I say I'm wrong. Ha! All right, so the thing is, I go to sleep with this, and I wake up, and my face feels like I'm a newborn babe. Like, my skin is just like... Hello, we've just been born, bitch. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I wake up feeling so refreshed, and it's great because when I used to have my extra stressful, anxiety inducing job, I needed to look like I got more than two hours of sleep. And then I also hadn't had way too much to drink the night before because I was stressed and trying to relax. And sometimes I needed to do something besides watch TV because I was literally going to sleep and waking up with the same thought. Anyways, I like this a lot. It feels amazing. It's really easy. You don't have to use a ton of it. And you just like put it on your face and take your ass to bed. One thing I do like to do though, because it's winter, is sometimes I'll put this on my face and I'll go out a little bit in the cool air and let it just kind of be like all over my face. And then I walk back in and go to bed. I don't know if that changes anything, but in my mind it does and that's what matters. All right, I'm gonna talk about these products in tandem because they have become literal lifesavers for me combination oily skin girl and that is these botanics shine away products one is the moisturizer one is the toner the reason i'm doing them in tandem is because for me it's best to have both i have tried one by itself and then done that it does not work as well if you really want the all day like 12 hours of coverage that you would want then you use both I am shocked and surprised by these because I just bought them on a whim. I was on Ulta, don't look at me. And I bought them on a whim. I was looking for some new skincare stuff. I was looking for some concealers. I was looking for some things and I bought these and I am very surprised by how fantastic they work. This actually has SPF in it, which is cool to add to your sunscreen and keep in your skin from being an angry baked bitch. So I like this a lot. You use, you can use quite a bit of it, which I was, shocked and surprised by as well because I was like I don't want to use too much I thought that because it's mattifying that it would honestly like dry my skin out but it's moisturizing so surprise bitches surprise so I was very surprised by this I like both of them they do an excellent job it does tone my face but you can feel when you use this one that you can definitely feel that your skin is kind of drying the fuck out. And then when you use this, it moisturizes your skin. But when you put on, for instance, an Uma foundation or the Estee Lauder Futuristic or any kind of hydrating foundation, I don't know why I can't say H's without going, <sighs> but you're going to have to deal with it. I'm sorry. But um, if you're using any kind of hydrating foundation, you have combination of oily skin, you get to use these and it just makes it so that you do look dewy instead of like you're sweating out, you know, your problems so these are definite definite favorites definite bops all right next up in skincare uh this is another thing i brought which is naturally good for you beauty has no age it's a retinol anti-wrinkle serum it's got vitamin c vitamin a metafoam and Metafoam seed oil. This shit is bomb. Let me see if I can show it to you in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, this 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 makes my whole life. I like. I love it. Okay, I've noticed that my pores look less pory. What is that a word? It is now. My pores look less pory. They look less defined. They look less angry. And honestly, like they look a little tighter. I know that they're not actually like shrinking or anything but the look of them is smaller so they don't look like big angry bitches anymore and it doesn't look like a whole other person can just like take a dive into my pores like they used to this has been my friend and i'm actually surprised by how it has no irritation for my skin and i used to be very very sensitive and i'm not, I'm not as sensitive as i used to be i will say that but if you have sensitive skin with all products i highly recommend that you just you know test spot it first before you slather it all over your face i just slathered it on my face because i mean it is what it is but i love this it's vegan it's cruelty free it's plant-based take that for what you want and I just love it. I think it's fantastic. It makes my skin look good. I was surprised because I hadn't noticed until one day I was, I think I was doing a foundation review and I was looking and I was like, bitch, are your pores? 
Your pores are in there? So yes. All right, to the face again. This has become a favorite of mine. Definitely a bop. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I love this shit. First of all, it smells good. Second, look at the spritz. It's a mist mist. It's an actual mist, y'all. And it smells good. It's, like I like this because it sits like this and then you shake it up and then you can spritz it on your face and it's great especially if you are wearing a matte foundation and you just kind of want to zhuzh it up. This is for that. This gives you that extra pizzazz and you're like, bitch, wow. Also, if you are a person who wears a powder highlighter like myself, you can use this to kind of, you know, settle that powder in because a lot of times I'll just go in with my wet sponge and just kind of damp it down so that that way it's not like a hard static highlight and it's smooth and it blends into my face but this is so nice and i just love the way that it sprays i love that it's a fine an actual fine mist instead of a little the little spray pump because those spray pumps i'm sorry but like at some point one little droplet always falls on my face and makes it look like i've been to prison and i'm you know i got the teardrop and I don't, i'm not about that so i love this this is definitely definitely a bot for me i don't know you can't see shit. i'm gonna quit showing you things moving on um, into the body, I definitely wanted to go ahead and show you this. It's the Caress, 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 Caress. Somebody tell me how to say this because I haven't figured it out. The Lily Bouquet Body Butter. It is horrific. Horrific. It, it, it makes my whole life a miserable, like I've used this one time. It is still Basically, it's full. You know why? Because the floral scent is so overwhelming that it makes you just want to douse your whole body in bleach, to be honest. I couldn't even wash this off. I put it on my hands to try it out. And when I tell you that I washed my hands like four times and couldn't get the smell off and then just had to be like, well, guess I'm cutting off my hands. I mean, obviously I did it, but I was close. The point is, it smells like old lady. It smells like rich old lady. Yeah, like rich old lady. It is a hideous, hideous smell. I hate it. If you are a person who loves florals and likes overwhelming florals and you want to smell like a rich old lady, then this is for you. But for me, it was an absolute flop. And it could have been a bop because the formula is actually nice, but the smell is hideous. And speaking of hideous smells, for my final item, oh my gosh, I've gone through so much shit. For my final item here, I have the... Um, aromatic elixir perfume and I got this from a scent box when I tell you this is disgusting I spritzed it one time and that's all I needed because it smells like bug spray I am not kidding I'm not kidding I wish I was it smells like bug spray I absolutely hate it and I want nothing to do with it ever again I'm going to put who it's by down here because I don't know that I have that here on this bottom but it's the aromatic elixir perfume it is horrible horrible i never want to see it again and i'm probably just going to like take take it out of here and i'm going to throw this in the trash and just let it die it's horrible death because nobody i know wants to smell like bug spray and that's it <laughs> That is my Feb January and February favorites and fails or bops and flops. You guys let me know which one you like the best. But this is everything. I, I feel like I had a lot more bops than I did flops, but I tend to really work a product out and see before I just like give up on it. The things that I gave up on, some of it I did not, like I tried that Maybelline and it would not work. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like the favorites and fails from me. I don't do empties if that's something you're into. I, I don't. I'm a Taurus. I hardly empty anything. Moving on. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorites and fails for February. Is there anything that I showed you here that you want to try? Anything that you maybe had a different opinion on? Anything that you actually liked <laughs> that I hated and vice versa? Let me know. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you would, please consider subscribing. I am on my way to a thousand subscribers for my 40th birthday in April. 40 is looking good on me, bitch. And I'd love it if you join me on the journey. I'm such a weirdo. If you're into that, well, welcome. And if you would, give this video a big thumbs up on your way out. And until next time, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And deuces! Oh, Lord. I'm going to keep trying to watch this Love is Blind because, like, I just don't get this show.